Hi guys, I'm back with another one and in this one we are going to take a look at the Diatoms Mamba Basic F722 Mini MK3 stack. So uh, we are going to, uh, to unbox it and we are going to replace my older F7 Diaton Mamba stack that, is, uh, that I have here uh, on my uh, build. Uh, the main reason I'm switching over to the new one is actually because the newer one has a barometer on board so uh, since I'm using this uh, quad mainly as my long-range uh, flyer uh, I'm really dependent on the height uh, and also the return to home function uh, yeah, works best with uh, uh, altitude reading. So, uh, first of all, let us unbox uh, the flight controller, or let us uh, go over the over the um, stats. We have three to six um, S LiPo input. We have MPU six thousand gyro on board. Uh, we have a flash memory. We have uh, forty five M. 10S burst on the ESC, we have uh, OSD, BSC and we have D-Shot uh, 3000, 6000 and 120. Um, the mounting holes are 20 by 20. So yeah, uh, let's go over what's in the box. When you open the box you are greeted with the Mamba logo that lets you uh, go to their support site. Uh, and the new packaging is actually really neat. You have this plastic piece that contains your stack, your rubber dampers, your accessories, XT60, and and we have a manual here. So let's go over the manual first. Okay, this is Mamba stack, both sides, and what's the, the other one? Oh, okay, so we have um, one, one diagram for the, for the FC, and we can go over since it's better, you're going to see better like so. Um, uh, the difference is the newer one has a bigger pads, so you can uh, easily solder on the the uh, wires to to the pads. Uh, also, you have USB Type C now. On the stack and so once we have the FC out of the packaging I can go over the features let us remove the sticker uh, yeah uh, as I said uh, we have a bigger pad to solder on to um, main reason as I mentioned is the barometer that is uh, on board because I can have altitude reading for my long-range uh, flights. Um, one really neat feature is USB Type-C since we are all using uh, USB Type-C uh, devices and for the for the for the ESC we have standard standard ESC that supports uh, D shot. Um, some of the the older ones didn't uh, support D shot. So you need to uh, if you wanted to use the RPM filtering, you needed to uh, uh, go with another uh, firmware on your ESC. But yeah. Um, 
on the next step I'm going to uh, show you how to assemble the, the uh, stack since I'm going to remove the old one and I'm going to take you step by step through the process and once we have uh, this one out of the box we will compare the new and old one so yeah let's go and take out the FC out of the box uh, out of the quad So, uh, this is uh, the quad uh, as I have uh, uh, set up with the older MK2F2 uh, stack. Uh, I'm going to remove the FC and I mean the whole stack so we can replaced with a new new one okay so uh, these are uh, the connection I was using to power off on my um, tramp and uh, ghost so uh, this is the ESC desoldered and ready to go out. Uh, I will leave the, these these O-rings beneath the ESC because I can use these these rubber ones or. Let us do let us do uh, these rubber ones. So for that, I'm going to remove the O-rings. Uh, in this case, the stack is going to be more, let's say, floaty on the standoffs because in this case, uh, these are really really tight because they have nuts on the other side so let's remove uh, now I'm taking these rubber grommets to isolate the whole stack from the frame Since the bare pads actually don't take flux that well uh, or uh, solder wire that well, I like to use a little bit of soldering flux so the it's much easier. You can see how better the pads are taking the let me redo the ones I did without the without the flux just to okay so let's do the individual wires one by one And I have a problem. Since um, these uh, older uh, ESCs have different uh, style of uh, layout of the pads, uh, this first one is going to be really short. So, so I need to replace uh, this wire on both sides. Okay. Um, so we have uh, the ESC 
uh, soldered on uh, to the motors. Uh, it was a bit of a hassle because I'm uh, running my uh, FC uh, on the back of the quad. Uh, reason being, if you ever uh, ran the board cam and the GPS, they don't play along that that good. So uh, I need to do to separate the board cam and interference coming from the board cam to the to the GPS. So uh, this is the reason why uh, my uh, wiring looks the way it is, uh, the way it looks. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, I will take uh, uh, this opportunity and show you the FC uh, from the bottom. We have basically. And the barometer that I'm talking about, the uh, memory, uh, the F7 chip, uh, and boot button is also uh, on this underside as well as the USB. Uh, <coughs> we have some uh, control LEDs for the gyro MCU 5 volt, 3.3 volt and uh, voltage um, since this day and age um, a lot of people are running DJI uh, system that is uh, running on 9 volts uh, so uh, you need to take in consideration that this board doesn't have 9 volts output on board so yeah uh, Let's connect the FC to the ESC. And I'm going to run this wiring a little bit different. So I'm going to connect the So here we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, we need these these pads for our um, cam and VTX. Uh, so first uh, one is five volt ground, and this one goes to the camera. Uh, this is these ones. Uh, I'm going to use for. Uh, for the camera, this is uh, to the VTX, and these are these are for the ghost. So I just noticed that I don't have all the wires ran the correct way. So yeah, um, let me solder on the camera first. Uh, as I told you, I'm actually using a little bit of flux on these pads and I'm going to solder to the first one that is this is 5 volt ground this pad is for the camera input and I need the last one that is going to the VTX and for the uh, for the um, receiver. I need the 5 volt. This is the 5 volt. I need ground. Uh, 
and I need dx for the ghost protocol so 1 over so yeah so I have all the pads that I need to connect uh, over here so let, let me go and actually I might um, let me connect the ghost first and see how so how it goes so yeah I'm actually considering I need firstly to shorten the the wires So this is my 5 volt that goes on to the second pad over here since this is 5 volt. Next to that is my ground that I'm going to also make a little bit shorter. Okay, and for the VTX I'm actually going to run it between the wires to keep it clean and I don't like actually stacking up the wires on top of the FC because uh, uh, the wires can um, interfere with the gyro. Gyro is this chip right here so I'm going to once again okay so um, let me see um, first one is 5 volt and this is the red wire I have over here Okay, uh, so uh, I have, uh, since I have a, a GPS, I need to solder on the GPS and I'm going to use the these four pads in the back. So this is a, these four and first one is 5 volt. This is ground, this is TX, this is RX. Okay, so to solder on the GPS, um, you need to you need to take a look at the wiring. So the first wire coming from the connector is ground that is going to the ground, that is the second pad next one is TX that is going on RX pad that's the way you connect the peripherals to your e-words then the third one is your RX that is going on the TX pad and the first one is voltage or rather 5 volt coming from the FC so yeah um, and one last thing that I left is the pad from the battery 
um, since I didn't know how to run or how I'm going to run these uh, yeah since I'm going to do all the same like I did with everything else I'm running this time a lot of solder on both pads and I'm going to use this To use the same wires that I used on the previous one and I'm going to solder up the positive I'm going to go vertical on that because I don't have much room here for everything Okay, um, I have the leads, the leads soldered on to the to the stack. And one more thing uh, is, I need to secure the stack since I decided to go with the. Um, the, without the nuts on the bottom I need to use the nuts on top so yeah okay to double check everything um, we have uh, the the stack secured uh, to the frame uh, as I said I'm not using the screw that is hard mounted to the frame that, that's why the FC has some uh, wiggle room actually some some frames prefer uh, rather harder mounted um, FC to the to the frame but yeah we'll see how this one uh, behaves we have um, uh, the pads for the for the camera over here that are connected to the board cam that I have on board. First, first pad is 5 volt ground video, next one is for the VTX. These pads here in the second row or rather first row are 5 volt ground and TX that is uh, that, that's because I'm using uh, Ghost Duo. Uh, over here I have my GPS soldered on these pads you can use for the LED uh, these two are for the buzzer and we have one whole UART um, over here that is still available uh, one thing I didn't mention is that you have the LEDs to troubleshoot your FC and everything is connected and ready to be powered on and let's check if we done everything correctly yeah we have our gyro in his in his in initializing we have a 5 volt that is okay ground okay and we have the we have the voltage to the FC and I don't have anything connected to the to the VTX and I'm not going to to power it like that without the antenna so yeah uh, this is a overview and um, uh, of the of the stack and as I said I, when I remove the old one I'm going to compare it to 
to the to the newer one um, we have really large pads now to solder on and it's really easy and convenient rather than solder on to the these uh, tiny ones um, we have also much clearer uh, top version portion of the of the FC um, the well, connector to the ESC is on the bottom the uh, USB is on the bottom not interfering with anything uh, on here and um, since I'm using uh, the ghost and the and my VTX antennas are really staying staying clear of all the old things on top and yeah basically it's it's all about uh, the uh, barometer uh, for me so this is my long range rig and I need altitude reading for the for my flights and this is this is why I switched but yeah uh, these are the this is how you uh, set up the set up the FC and yeah off to the next one